Um, I'm a PhD student at University College Dublin, uh, but uh, my study will focus on uh, the Po Valley region in Italy. Uh, basically, we saw already why soil moisture and then irrigation could be a, a strong interest in that area. And uh, basically, why irrigation? Something that uh, can affect the uh, atmosphere, and it's a human dimension. So basically, it's not driven completely by something physical. There is also the human decision in that. So basically, uh, some studies uh, about uh, the impact of irrigation, we can range uh, from a global uh, cooling from uh, almost zero Kelvin to 1.5 or 1.3 in some studies. Um, but uh, some regions uh, uh, show different impacts, uh, like the Po Valley and the Mediterranean region. In some study, global study has a, a cooling impact, and in other has a warming impact. So let's go more deep into the scaling effect. Um, there is no agreement of what causes uh, the cooling impact of irrigation between a GCM and RCM. So uh, GCM found that uh, the cloud radiation feedback is the driver of the cooling impact, while RCM find that there is a uh, difference in the energy partitioning at the surface. Um, moreover, there is uh, no clear uh, understanding whether the irrigation has an impact uh, on local circulation. Then uh, Saxon uh, was uh, discussing that uh, uh, there is no common parameterization of irrigation within the models, uh, and most of the GCM uh, has uh, an overrepresentation of irrigation, which causes uh, uh, a water request of a hundred times more than what will, will be available water-wide. So let's go in the study area first. Um, I'm uh, using WARF to assess the impact of, impact of irrigation. And uh, I ran uh, three months of 2015, which was a heat wave uh, in the latest part of the simulation. Um, I used Aeratorium for uh, the atmosphere and surface variable as a boundary condition, and GFS for soil uh, boundary condition. Um, I found that uh, uh, the microphysics parameterization doesn't impact that much the precipitation during the heat wave, so I chose the WSM6, and uh, I'm using NOAA LSM. Uh, now, let's go to the parameterization of irrigation. So basically, in this region, we have the three methods, uh, the drip, uh, channel, and sprinkler. Um, the first two are applied, water applied to the surface, uh, the drip uh, has the leaf interception. The channel has no uh, interaction with the canopy. While sprinkler um, basically inject uh, water to the lowest level of the model. Um, you can see that uh, this irrigation is applied to an irrigation field, kindly uh, given in an ungrid uh, um, geogrid format by Mike. And uh, you can see here a zoom of the area interested with uh, the irrigation percentage. Um, now we will see there are some user-defined uh, quantities that uh, regulate irrigation. Uh, basically, I will irrigate three, three hours each day, starting from uh, my, uh, May 15. And the amount, uh, uh, I derive it from Eurostat values, uh, and will be uh, 5.7 millimeter per day, equally divided in the three hours. So going uh, to the uh, model setup, I have a, a control run that starts on May 1st. Then on May 15, we will have the, uh, the fork. So it will start the irrigation. But then I will start to analyze the results from uh, June 1st to avoid any kind of uh, non-equilibrium state in the soil moisture. So let's see if there is an impact of irrigation. Uh, this is the last time step of the simulation, so June 31st. And uh, we can see that uh, here we have the differences of uh, the soil moisture in a color plot. And uh, most of the differences can be found in the irrigated area. If you remember the slide a few minutes ago, a few slides ago, uh, of the where it's actually irrigated. Um, we can see some uh, drying which is not significant, but uh, 
the wetting of uh, the irrigation is, uh, accounts for 90% of the increase in most of the regions. Uh, and we will see some differences. Uh, they are always computed uh, as uh, the irrigation method minus uh, the control run. So some uh, time series first. Um, we have the soil moisture at the first level and uh, the temper two meter temperature differences. So at first we can see that uh, there is uh, an impact of soil moisture uh, through the whole domain, to the whole simulation. So the red is the control run. We can see that it is slowly dry down, um, especially in July, which was a, a huge heat wave. We had only one event of precipitation in the whole month for the whole area. And um, uh, we can see that uh, uh, the channel method and the sprinkler method help uh, the soil moisture not to dry down so much, while the drip method shows a, a bigger dry than the other two. This could be related uh, to some uh, special averaging because uh, the, dry, uh, the drip method showed that uh, uh, a huge uh, increase in uh, soil moisture in the western area, but uh, it uh, doesn't show that in the eastern area of the irrigation. So that could be results in a drying out. Then uh, if, we show, if we see the delta temperatures, uh, we see that uh, uh, the, the differences has uh, the urinal cycle. And uh, it's, uh, the magnitude of these differences are bigger during July than during June. And uh, this uh, leads to uh, kind of the idea to separate the two months uh, since they have two different synoptic conditions. Uh, let's first see that uh, um, if we integrate, uh, if we do the daily cycle of the latent heat and the moisture flux, um, the irrigation causes an increase up to 30% of the integrated daily flux uh, in, the, uh, in July and up to 15% in June. Uh, this is... Um, in uh, July, it's a, a statistically significant change uh, because you can see that uh, uh, the mean values are also outside of the standard deviation. And uh, um, while well, in June, uh, it's less significant. Uh, what you can see is that uh, um, the, sorry, uh, the evaporation flux um, in the irrigated run help the soil moisture to stay the same and uh, uh, help the, um, the moisture flux uh, to remain constant even during the heat wave. So there is no change uh, for the channel and sprinkle method of the magnitude uh, of the evaporation flux, uh, while in the other runs uh, there is a decrease in the controller and the drip, uh, there is a decrease uh, of the evaporation flux uh, and increase of the sensible heat flux. This, of course, will have an impact uh, on the uh, vertical profile. So we can see that uh, different method has, of course, uh, different impact uh, on the vertical. And uh, especially here, I will show two plots, uh, uh, the sprinkler and the channel. And uh, while the sprinkler has a mainly all the impact uh, on the central part of the day, uh, the, the channel method uh, affect uh, uh, the vertical structure through the whole day. Then uh, um, what I notice is that the, the, um, the method has a different, uh, uh, affected differently the atmosphere depending on the synoptic condition. So basically, uh, while here we see the channel averaged uh, for uh, June and then July. And we can see that uh, uh, during June, the magnitude of the change is smaller than during July. And in particular, we can see a decrease of the temperature on the vertical profile below uh, kilometer 0.5. Uh, that is uh, down to uh, minus uh, 1.6 Kelvin. This is, uh, again, it's an average uh, over the whole domain and over the whole month. So. It's a huge decrease. That, of course, will have an impact on uh, other features of the atmosphere in, that, in this region. Especially, we will see the precipitation. 
So again, uh, the scheme has a different impact of precipitation. We can see that uh, uh, July, basically uh, during July, the channel method uh, increased the precipitation uh, significantly again on the slopes of the mountains. Uh, these red dots are uh, where the hills of the mountains are. And the, the drip method uh, caused a, basically a decrease uh, outside the irrigated domain. Um, again, that decrease, uh, it's, so in some points, uh, is significant. In some other, is not. Uh, while the increase in the channel method is significant. Um, of course, again, uh, since uh, there was a change in the vertical uh, profile temperature, that affected, uh, that uh, is uh, different uh, between the two, the two months, uh, this impact also the precipitation changes. So here we can see how uh, the irrigation uh, affect uh, the precipitation during two different synoptic conditions, June and July. June, again, it's a pretty normal month, while July, it's a heat wave condition, so very stable and, uh, and uh, very high temperature anomalies. Again, here, um, it's uh, in, the, in June, we have, uh, um, we have an increase in some area of precipitation and a decrease in some others. Uh, we still have to look why this is happening. Most likely, it can be also a feature of uh, an averaging process. This is, again, the average over the whole uh, month. While in uh, July, there is uh, uh, clearly something of circulation going on. So I will focus now on uh, why we have those changes in the, in the precipitation. And uh, what we were looking into was the, um, the change in the transportation of the water vapor. And uh, we could see that uh, um, we have an increase. Uh, this is, uh, again, uh, July uh, average. And uh, this is a 15 UTC, so after the irrigation took place. And uh, we have mainly an increase uh, of the water content, and the, the map show the lowest level of the, the model. And we have an increase almost everywhere. Uh, and some, uh, in some places, it accounts for 40% increase, uh, especially in the western area. And then uh, we took a cross section uh, that is shown in red. And uh, we saw of the, of the vertical structure. Um, there, you can see that uh, um, there is an increase of the water vapor content um, in the lowest levels, so below uh, like uh, 1.5 kilometers, and a decrease uh, of uh, the water content in the upper levels. Uh, this is not a feature of the averaging process. Uh, I, show, I saw all the cross section for the whole, uh, the whole simulation, and they are always there. So there is something going on. And uh, we can see that there is a transport of uh, water vapor from the lowest uh, uh, part, uh, which is the uh, lowest part of the region, which is here, that corresponds to this area. And we can see that uh, the water vapor here is increased, which is like here. And this is like uh, where uh, the Alps uh, starts. In, the, in this area, then uh, we have also the precipitation. So uh, we think that uh, the, the increase in precipitation that we saw could be caused by the transport of water vapor from the irrigated area towards the, um, the mountains hills with this particular method. Then we will have to look uh, as well in the other um, two methods and see if there is uh, uh, some similar feature especially with the drip method that show a decrease in precipitation outside of the domain. Then here I will draw some uh, uh, quick conclusions, uh, basically to show you that uh, irrigation has an, an effect, 
So the water management uh, of the Po Valley has an effect uh, on the local, uh, local climate. Basically, again, we saw the same results as uh, the literature. So there is a decrease in the temperature, especially during the warmest part of the day. Irrigation uh, in this model uh, changed the energy budget, so could account for the decrease in temperature. And we have a, a decrease in the, an increase, sorry, in the moisture flux, up to 30% for the July, so for the heat wave part. Uh, irrigation, um, the parameterization uh, impacted differently the atmosphere and is impacted uh, differently by the, the larger scales. Um, then uh, um, I will show some uh, future work. Uh, basically, we have already calculated the CAPE, SIN, uh, and L LFC and LCL for each run for each hour. So we will try to see if there is an impact uh, of irrigation and the different method of irrigation on these parameter, uh, parameters. And uh, I will try to validate uh, these uh, three methods with uh, some data, like soil moisture, evaporation uh, from uh, satellite data, because we don't have any flux tower in that region, so there is no way we can uh, validate that. And for the July period, which is kind of interesting for the stability part, we don't have even any uh, radio sound. And then uh, um, I will try to analyze uh, the scales of the water transport and uh, try to understand why the drip scheme was behaving differently than the other two. And then, of course, try to publish the paper. So thank you. Thank you.